Hi, in this class we will continue our study of numbers and the next topic that we are going to see is known as addition and subtraction of integers. So, we have seen what addition and subtraction of whole numbers is and we have also seen addition and subtraction of natural numbers. However, in this class we will look at addition and subtraction of integers. Now, when two integers are added, so we are looking at addition first, so the first operation that we will look at is addition of integers. So I will write addition of integers here. And whenever we add two integers, we get at least these four cases that I will put before you. So the first case that we get when we add two integers is if both the integers are positive. So suppose we have two integers, 109 and 22. Note that both these integers are positive numbers. So both these integers are positive numbers and they are being added. So this can be one scenario. In the second case, we can have this number as positive and we can have this number as negative. So we can also have such a case wherein we have the first number as positive and the second number as negative. Note that we can also have a case in which the first number is negative. So now this first number is negative whereas the second number is positive. And in the final case, we will consider that the first number is negative and similarly the second number is also negative. So now when dealing with the addition of integers, we can get these four cases. Note that to solve these cases, we have two rules that I have written on the board. Now, the rule says that whenever two integers to be added, so these are the rules for addition that I have written here. And so these are applicable to addition of two integers. So the rule one says that if the two given integers to be added have like signs, so we are talking about like signs now. What do we mean by like signs? By like signs, we mean that either both these will be positive or both these will be negative. So this rule one applies to this case. So I will write here that this is a case wherein we can use rule one because signs of both numbers are similar that is positive in this case and signs of both numbers in this final case is negative. So these two integers also have the plus sign and these two integers also have the same minus sign. And so we say that in both these cases rule one applies. Now let us look at what rule one is. Rule 1 tells us that whenever we have to add two integers that have like signs, then we add the numerical values of the integers, not considering the signs of the integers. And then we give the sum their common like sign. Well, let us look at this rule by means of an example. So here, because both numbers are positive, they, we say that they have like signs. And so we apply rule 1 here. And rule 1 says add the numerical values. Now numerical value of 109 is 109 itself. So I will say this is 109. Similarly, numerical value of 22 is 22 itself. So I will write a 22 here. So we've added the numerical values, not considering their give, not considering their sign. And then we give their sum the common like sign. So we first added these numerical numbers 109 and 22. And then we obtained the value 102. 31. And so when we added these two integers, which both had a like sign positive, then we first took their numerical value. So numerical value of 109 is 109 and numerical value of 22 is 22 itself. And so we added the numerical values and then we gave their sum the common like sign. Now the sum was obtained as 131 and the common like sign to both these integers is positive because both these are positive. And so we will include a positive sign here. And so this will become plus 131, which can also be written as simply 131. Now this was very easy because the numbers you were dealing with were both positive. And so this can be taken as addition of two whole numbers. But what happens in the final case? In the final case, we have minus 109, which is a negative number being added to minus 22, which is again a negative number. Because both integers are negative, we follow the rule one again. And the rule one says that if two integers to be added have like signs, then we first add the numerical values, not considering their signs. So if I don't consider the signs and add the numerical values, I get 109 plus 22. So I'm adding these two numerical values, 109 and 22 without considering the sign. But the next step is after we have added the numerical values without considering the sign, we give the sum their common like sign. Now, in this case, the common like sign is minus, And so we will give this sum the sign minus and so our final answer becomes minus of 109 plus 22. Now we know that 109 plus 22 is 131 and minus of 131 will be this number itself that is minus 131. 
So now you've seen two cases. In the first case, we saw that when both integers were positive, we got a positive whole number. And if both integers to be added were negative, we got a negative number. And this is how we apply the first rule to these two cases. Now let us look at the second case. In this second case, we have first number as positive and second number as negative. So here, the two integers to be added have unlike signs. And so this condition is not satisfied. And so we will look at the second rule, which is for unlike signs or opposite signs. So we are now looking at the rule two, which is for unlike or opposite signs. And note that here, the method says that whenever we have to add two integers, which have unlike signs or opposite signs, then we have to find the difference between their numerical values, not considering the signs. So we will do this first step. Now, because in this case, one is positive, one is negative, we apply the second rule, that is they have unlike signs. And the second rule says that we have to find the difference between their numerical values, not considering their signs. Now, if we consider the sign of 109, it is plus, and so we will not consider that sign, and we will take 109 itself. The sign that is associated with 22 is a negative sign, and so here we will take only the numerical value, that is 22. So we'll ignore the signs and we will just take the numbers 109 and 22. And then we will find the difference of the two. Note that the difference of the two is nothing but 109 minus 22. And we know that 109 minus 22 is equal to 87. So we've now obtained that the numerical difference or the difference between numerical values is equal to 87. However, then comes the next step wherein we have first found the difference and then we have to give the difference the sign of the numerically larger integer. Now in this case the numerically larger integer is 109 and the sign of 109 is plus and so we will give this difference the sign plus. And whenever we write a plus we can directly write the number because absence of any sign denotes the plus sign automatically. And so we found out 109 plus minus 22 is equal to 87 and this was done using rule 2. Now to get more clarity, let us look at the second application of rule 2 or this example again. Note that here, the first number is negative and the second number is positive. So because the two numbers have unlike signs, we will apply the second rule here as well. So this is a case of rule 2. And in this rule, it is said that we have to find the difference between numerical values. Now the numbers are minus 109 and 22. And then if we don't consider the signs, then the numerical values become 109 and 22. Well, so I've now taken only the numerical values, that is 109 and 22, without considering the sign. The next step is, we have to give the difference, there, the sign of the numerically larger integer. So this difference is found first, and we know that this difference is equal to 87. However, we have been told that we have to give the sign, or we have to give the difference, the sign of the numerically larger integer. What this means is, the difference has been found now, but the sign that will be given to this difference will be of the numerically larger integer. Now, if you see the number 109 is larger than 22, and so the sign of 109 will come to this. The sign of 109 is minus, and so here we will write a minus 87. And in this way, we can apply the two rules for addition of integers. Let us now see what we mean by subtraction of integers or in which way subtraction of integers can be performed. So now we are talking of the second operation which is called subtraction. And because we are dealing with integers here, we will call this subtraction of two integers. So we are dealing with two integers here, one of which has to be subtracted from the other. So let us look at how subtraction of two integers is carried out. Well, we have a rule to explain us how to carry out subtraction of two integers. And the rule says that subtracting one integer from another one is same as adding its additive inverse. Now to understand this, let us take an example of two integers a and b. So we are now taking two integers a and b and suppose we are subtracting this integer b from this integer a. Now this rule says that subtracting an integer from another one is same as adding its additive inverse. So the meaning of this operation is we are subtracting b from a which is same as adding b's additive inverse to a. So we will say a plus b's additive inverse. So now we have learned a new rule which says that subtracting two integers or subtracting one integer from the other is same as adding 
that integer's additive inverse to the other integer. Now, let us see what we mean by additive inverse. So here we have a term known as additive inverse. Now, additive inverse of any integer is that integer when, when added to that integer gives us a zero. So in other words, if we are dealing with a number such as b, then additive inverse of b is simply obtained by putting a minus sign to b. And so b's additive inverse becomes minus b. So if you want to substitute b's additive inverse, we will write a minus b in its place. And note that because you have substituted additive inverse, this minus sign now becomes a plus sign. So here we write a plus minus b. And so this can very easily be solved because this is of the type of addition of two integers. So we've seen how addition can be performed and we've also seen how subtraction can be performed using addition and the concept of additive inverse. Now, if you are a little confused, let us try this method on some numbers. Well, let us assume the first numbers to be subtracted are, let us assume that 193 minus 24 is to be performed. So now we will take two integers. The first one is 193 and the second one is 24. And now we will apply the method of subtraction of two integers. Well, here if you see, subtracting an integer from another one is same as adding its additive inverse. And so, subtracting 24 from 193 is same as adding additive inverse of 24, which we know is minus 24, to the first number, that is 193. So we can write 193 minus 24 is equal to 193 plus minus 24. And now that we've written this as an addition of two integers, we can very easily find the answer. And so now when we perform this operation of addition of two integers, one of which is 193 and the second one is minus 24, we get the answer 169. So 193 minus 24 gives us the value 169. Now this was done using this rule that we know. And so let us take one more example for clarity. So suppose this time, the numbers to be subtracted are the first number is 193 and the other number to be subtracted is minus 24. So in this case, we have the first number is 193 and the second number is minus 24. Now here again, we will apply the rule which says that subtracting this integer from this integer is same as adding the additive inverse of this integer to this. So additive inverse of minus 24 becomes plus 24. And so because we have included the additive inverse of minus 24, this minus sign will change to plus. And then this number minus 193 will be preserved. So now we have written that this equation or this expression equals minus 193 plus 24. And this is of the form of addition of two integers. And so we can easily perform this addition. And we finally get the answer as this is equal to minus of 169. So I'm now not going into the detail of addition of two integers once more because we've already seen how to add two integers. And so the answer to this specific case becomes minus of 169. Let us take one final example to illustrate this concept. Now, suppose the first number is 193 and the second number to be subtracted is minus 24, then what will happen? Well, in this case, note that the first number is 193 and the second number is minus 24. And in this case, we have to perform this subtraction. Now, again, we'll rule the, use the same single rule which says that subtracting an integer from another one is same as adding its additive inverse. So here, if we are subtracting this from this, we will add the additive inverse of this second number to this. So the first number is unchanged. The second number has a minus sign and here we have a minus 24. So this minus 24 whose additive inverse now becomes plus 24. And now because we have replaced this by its additive inverse, this sign will change to plus and so we get 193 plus 24 which can very easily be evaluated as equal to 217. And so in this case, the answer that we've got is 217. Now one final case remains which is if we have the first number as negative and the second number to be subtracted as positive. So this can be another scenario. Now, if you look at this final case, again, we will apply the same rule, which says that subtracting an integer from another one is same as adding its additive inverse. So of 24 additive inverse is minus 24. And because we've included additive inverse of this 24, we will now replace this minus by a plus. And so we will get a plus here. And the first number is also retained, which is 193 with a negative sign. And now we know how to perform addition of two integers. And so this will give us the answer, negative 
217. And so we've now seen how to perform subtraction of two integers for any integral values that is positive integers or negative integers.